to six, a helping hand with your land. Neil from Essex here to do a quick demo for you today between the loaders on the new Kubota LX tractor, the LA535, and the loader on the Kubota Standard L, the LA525. These are two surprisingly different tractors. When you pick through them, you're gonna notice they're basically the same size, but they're for really different applications. And the loader spec sheets have some interesting tidbits in them. So when you go through and you look at those spec sheets, you're gonna notice that the rated capacities of these two loaders are within 15 pounds of one another. However, the loader on the bigger Kubota tractor is a larger loader with a longer boom on it, more lift height. There are some differences, and it's gonna be interesting today to come out and hook these things to a load cell and see how those differences extend beyond the spec sheet. When you go through and look at loaders, they're measured typically in worst case scenarios if the company is giving you honest numbers. Things like the center of the bucket to full height, and as we go up or we go forward, our lift capacities drop. And the different geometries on these loaders are gonna lead them to have different capacities at different heights. So we're gonna take these two tractors today, hook them to a load cell, and see if in real world applications, these machines may perform more differently than their spec sheets may lead you to believe. So first, a little bit on our setup. This unique looking attachment here on the front loader is actually a piece that we use for trade shows. It's to mount a flat screen TV on the front of a tractor. But it works great for this test because it places my load cell at the center of the loader and brings this chain out to very close to where a measurement called bucket center is. When you look at a tractor spec sheet, Oftentimes, you're gonna get two measurements. You're either gonna get pivot pin, which is measured back behind the loader coupler. It's a good marketing number because it gives you a big number, but you don't actually lift anything from that pivot pin point. So it tends to be in an inflated number. If you base your purchase decisions off of a pivot pin measurement, you may be disappointed when you go to lift that amount of weight and load it into a truck because you won't be able to do it. The more honest measurement is what we're gonna use here today and it's called bucket center. So it moves that measurement point out to approximately where the middle of the bucket is going to sit. It's usually measured at 500 millimeters forward of the pivot pin and the front of this plate sits at right about approximately that spot. So we're gonna measure from bucket center. This right here is a 10,000 pound load cell attached to a chain that's attached to a tire that's buried about 10 feet underground. So we're gonna go and try to lift this thing up and see what kind of loads we get off of this loader at varying heights. This is actually day two of shooting this video. You'll notice on the back of the track that we have a grading scraper attached. This is for ballast on this machine. Going through and adding ballast to your tractor is not some kind of sleazy dealer add-on when we're selling a tractor. It's us making sure that you've got that machine set up properly, both for it to operate safely, but also so that you can get the most out of it capacity-wise. When we were out lifting with no ballast on the back of the machine, we were able to very easily pick the tires up in the air, not giving us real measurements out front. So that's why this scraper is back here. These tires at this point are unballasted, but we put this heavy grading scraper back here to give us that weight behind the tractor to keep the rear end of the machine planted. So our first test here would be at essentially 1500 millimeters. Now that is the carrying height specification at bucket center for a tractor. This one comes out at 1,030 pounds. Kubota spec on this is at 1,069. Now that makes perfect sense. There's a certain margin of error here in a tractor given the pressure of its hydraulic system. So that to me goes through and kind of validates that our setup here is coming up with what appear to be pretty proper numbers. We're gonna do one more measurement here and take this the whole way up to full height check how that compares to the rated specification. So that test comes out at 847 pounds. When we check our spec sheet, we are at 827. So we're right just above the specification on this one at what is essentially full height. I might have a little bit more room to go up here yet that's gonna bring those numbers exactly in line. What I think this test is gonna show when we compare to the other tractor, when I say these two loaders are basically exactly the same specification, according to Kubota, within 15 pounds of each other at full height, 
My suspicion is when we come down to lower heights, we're gonna find the bigger loader on the L3901 being more capable than what this one is, and that's due to the complicated geometry of loaders. At different heights, they're gonna lift different amounts. You can get different capacities depending on the position of your hydraulic cylinders. There's a lot more to what these loaders can do than what these simplistic numbers on the spec sheet are going to show you. So, let's bring this other bigger tractor over and see what the numbers tell us. So for our next test, we're gonna take this tractor with its a little bit larger loader and test this at exactly the same height as the B-Series machine. I haven't changed any of the chain lengths out here to get this thing up to the full height of the tractor. So we're gonna give us an identical height match between these two machines from the B-Series maximum height compared to where the L-Series bottoms out. So when we lift this loader up here, and I'll watch our load cell and hold here at 958 pounds. So what those results tell us is that at equal heights, this loader is actually able to lift 120 pounds more than what the B-Series machine would show. And that's because these loader specifications are taken at the loader's maximum height. When you lower this loader down to the same height as what the B-Series machine is, because it's the way its geometry works, you're actually lifting about 120 pounds more, a pretty significant amount at the same height as what the B-Series tractor does. So the larger boom on the standard L-Series machine kind of leads you to believe that it's able to lift less weight than what it actually can because those measurements are taken at that very conservative maximum height. Dropping down to the equal height is what the B-Series machine is, actually shows you that this tractor is more capable. So now by adding those extra couple of links and going up to the loader's full height, now we see these numbers start to drop and start to come back in line with that rated number that we usually would look at when we're looking at a B-Series machine. That's coming up right at 904 pounds. So you can see as that height goes up, the loader capacity starts to drop off. So down here to carrying height, the standard L is lifting 1,137 pounds basically maintaining that same 120 pound or so advantage over top of the B series. So kind of if we go through and look at all this in conclusion, when you have a larger loader with a longer boom, the good conservative measurement of taking that measurement at full height disadvantages this tractor a little bit. Down at lower heights where you're typically breaking out loads or lifting and carrying things, it actually is a lot more capable than what it lets on by about 10% or so. So keep that in mind when you're looking at loader specifications, it's simply way more complicated than say being able to take the big marketing number from a tractor company and somehow apply that to your application. You need to be very cautious about this in a lot of different ways. One, if you're specking a tractor for a purchase where you need to lift a very specific load, understand that spec sheet and know where the measurements are being taken. More and more of these tractor companies anymore are going with pivot pins at carrying heights. Because they give really big numbers, that would be by measuring on the back side of the mount plate back here, where your loads never sit, at a carrying height, which a lot of times is fine, but if you need to be taking that load and dumping it into a back of a truck, you're not gonna be able to do that. The number sitting back over here at a carrying height can be 50, 60% higher than what that tractor is really going to be able to do if you were to scoop up a pile of dirt and try to load it into a dump truck. So keep an eye out for that. Years ago, this practice of using these carrying height pivot pin numbers wasn't nearly as rampant as what it is today. With more and more companies trying to break into this business, Companies are getting looser and looser with how they're marketing these numbers. And as a tractor sales guy, we need to be very cautious about this and educate people. When you have these specific loads, you need to be measuring and looking at that loader spec sheet in exactly the right way. Also understand how things like lift height can disadvantage particular models. Tractors like this Standard L have a very large loader on it that can lift a lot higher than what a lot of other competitive machines can in this space. So keep in mind if you see a machine that ekes this tractor out by just a little bit, 
Odds are, if it's got a loader that doesn't lift as high, it's actually probably not quite as capable as what this machine is. So lots of things here to digest. Unfortunately, as a consumer, the best thing that you can do is when you look at those loader lift capacity measurements, make sure you're also looking for the height that it was measured at and the position, whether it's bucket center or pivot pin, and make sure you're comparing those things equally from one tractor model to the next. So if you're going through the buying process for a piece of equipment and we can help, or if you have parts or service needs for a machine you've already got, give us a call at Messix. We're available at 800-222-3373 or online at Messix.com. So there's a couple... So going through and doing this test at what is approximately, I really should have a tape measure to do this. 